right now, uh, to treat the, uh, the uh, challenges that the outreach uh, plays in the relations and services of the city of Toronto, there are over 200 people working as I speak to restore that system. Uh, the feeling is that uh, the email system will be, uh, should be in place by now, and that by 3 p.m., uh, the website, Blackberry, and 311 should be restored completely. But here's the complication. Uh, to turn the system off uh, the way it should be turned off, it's easy to turn it back on and it gets an immediate response. However, uh, given the situation that uh, developed with that sudden loss of power, uh, there is the caveat that uh, there may be some problems. But if there are, uh, we certainly have enough people working on them to restore them as quickly as possible. But at least by 3 o'clock this afternoon, the system should be fully operational. So, so to, not to overload the 311 system, but then how, who do you want, or what kinds of emergencies, or what kinds of reports do you want to hear from, from citizens first? Well, the, uh, the, the email system is uh, very important. As I said, that should be there now. Uh, okay. But 311 should be restored uh, uh, by at least uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Deputy Mayor, who's making decisions about the system from your area? Well, the, um, from what you have in front of you are three people working together uh, on this matter, uh, and uh, we're working in cooperation with each other. However, Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor are you are you the final voice on decisions that need to be made? Sorry? Well, uh, just to clarify a few things. So 311 has been working. We did have all our support systems, but we have been taking calls, and it's, uh, we're now supported by, by the system. Uh, we have an emergency operations center, it's a staff-driven center, so it's trained and, uh, and able to respond to emergencies. It's, we've obviously operationalized it yesterday at 11 o'clock. Anticipation that we have an emergency today and uh, we're there every week now. So we keep the staff up. Uh, we keep the mayor and the deputy mayor informed and sure how this works. And uh, our, our largely run the emergency for the elements of the city. So, are you making choices? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, I, if I may, one of the first uh, phone calls I made once I got the sense that the scope of the emergency was on public opinion. And she and I had a good chat, uh, and she indicated that uh, as a result of that conversation, she talked with the emergency people on her side, uh, who apparently had contacted the emergency people on our side uh, with the offer of any assistance that might be uh, needed. So I'm grateful for that cooperation, and I thank the Premier uh, for it. Sir, Deputy Mayor, who makes the final call in this situation, you or the Mayor? So, so if I can step in. Uh, DOC makes uh, the emergency operations committee. So they've been up and running since yesterday at 11. That includes chaired by Deputy City Manager John Levy. Uh, he has a whole team of people and they meet on a fairly regular basis. They have Anthony Hayes in Highbury, they have Mr. Five Hayes in the CPC, a fire department, the immediate garage and the water department. All these folks have, have continual meetings throughout the day and throughout the evening, 24 hours a day. Um, and they this is the mayor informed, this is the deputy uh, uh, the deputy mayor informed, and this is uh, I think what they're asking is if an emergency were called, uh, what would happen? Well, my understanding in that arrangement is that what's an emergency? The, the mayor has the authority to, to declare the emergency under statute, is that correct, Council? And then uh, once the emergency has been called, Council has decided, decided uh, uh, a number of meetings ago with Council to give the operational authority to the best decision making purpose over to the deputy mayor. That's the functionality. That, that operates once an emergency has been called. I just want to caution everyone that an emergency has not yet been called. That decision has not been made, and we're hoping that decision won't be made. But if it is, that's how it works. Can I ask about the trees, the down trees? Are, how many tree guys do you guys do you have out working on clearing those? Anthony, I think Anthony Haynes can answer that because they're expecting a hydro line. Sorry, the question was how many? Uh, I, I can tell you it's all over.
And is the situation uh, worse or better than you thought it might be at, at first glance? Well, I can tell you that I was out this morning assessing it firsthand and, and down quite a deep and tremendous and significant amount of damage. I was personally was up in the east side area and was able to try to uh, assess it there. Trees were falling down around us. So the effects were there. It's been quite a harrowing experience having human beings have a loud snap and, and, a, and a large tree would fall around your feet. And that just goes to show that the damage is still being done. Uh, the damage that was done overnight has not stopped yet. So the estimate earlier was that it was going to be could be up to three days before all power is all restored. Do you think it's actually could be, could it be longer? Yeah, and my real caution about that is that's based on some very very preliminary information. As you can imagine right now, our first priority is to make safe, as the mayor has indicated, and so our our employees are attending sites where the police and fire may be to ensure that the power is off online for the running on the ground. That's our first priority. And then the second is to bring on these major and important loads that support our city. stable. 